of the tensions. And we are seeing more and more of these issues around the world. Well, again, what does this have to do with information technology? I don't think that we can solve the, water, the issues around water availability, but one of the things that we hope to do is to provide the right information about the water availability and water ecosystem so that you understand the impact of decisions that are being made on the water environment, not just on your local area, and not just on your local state or your local county, but what happens to the water ecosystem, whether it's the watershed or whether it's a water, river, uh, water system that includes a river going through multiple counties or multiple countries in some cases. So a project that we have um, been going on for about a year now with the Nature Conservancy is actually addressing some of those problems. We're creating a technology framework and a visualization capability that is allowing the scientists who work for the Nature Conservancy and the local governments who we're working with to implement this um, solution to have a view of the water bodies, right? And the three water bodies that we're working on right now are listed on the charts here, where we could create a scenario, a visualization capability, imagine going in either through a 3D world or through a 2D um, implementation on your screen, on your PC, we you could go in and say, what if I build a dam here? What's the impact to the river flow downstream? You know, does it dry up or do we still have sufficient water for the downstream usage? What happens if I cut down some of the trees on this land and it changes the sedimentation or it changes the agricultural runoff? Or what does that impact to the river and the area of, around the river? So we're really taking an ecosystem view here, working with the scientists at the Nature Conservancy, working with the University of Wisconsin on some of the models and creating this IT framework that we hope provides an end-to-end -end picture and allows you to make the right trade-offs when you have to make decisions around water bodies. Okay, another project that's underway is a sensing project, so providing real-time sensing, real-time information to the Beacon Institute, which is run out of Beacon, New York. And this is a program that is implementing uh, in its entirety, when we finish the project, we'll have thousands of sensors that run 300 plus miles of the Hudson River so that we can understand real time what's going on in the river. So initially we'll be starting with the oxygen content, the turbidity, the temperature and pH of the water, monitoring the effect of some of the growth in the river, some of the fish migration in the river, but actually looking at that information real time. So again, I view this providing the information technology framework and some of the visualization tools to help the scientists understand what's going on in the river real time. So to provide some of these areas, some of these new innovative technologies, um, we also understand that we have to overcome some traditional barriers. I, some of these barriers are technological, and some of these are more political and um, policy related. As you might have heard earlier, um, some of the issues that have to happen with breaking down barriers in some of the government organizations first thing this morning during the welcome. So we believe that um, information technology um, can help to break down some of those barriers by, again, allowing for this collaborative innovation. We really need to navigate some of these complex political and um, policy boundaries relating to the environment. And this is an area where we are working with government organizations around the world to understand what some of those activities might be. This is a very emotional subject, as many of you know, have been working in the clintech space, where it is not always a logical outcome, um, sometimes very unpredictable outcomes, depending on the parties who are at the table. So again, our premise is if you have the right information in front of you, and you have all of the parties involved in creating you know, these scenarios and creating the right information, that you'll be able to come, out, come up with the best decisions uh, for implementing a solution. And again, balancing short-term and long-term issues because we will need government support um, to actually implement some of these solutions, whether it has to do with the type of fuel we're using, whether it has to do with the carbon emissions, or whether it has to do with the water policies. Okay. So again, information technology flow, we believe, is really critical. Providing systems that allow you to integrate, providing standards, working on common formats of information so that they can be shared. Uh, just an example, if you're a local municipality, you may have, for example, information from NOAA, who does some of the hydrology maps. You may have information from the USGS that is providing aerial satellites. You may have information from a local municipality that is providing uh, the water quality information. You may have reports and information from the Environmental Protection Agency. And you may or may not have information 
the local industries who are consumers of water in your local area, in your local environment. So you may have that information available, but it's typically uh, behind someone's uh, firewall. It is information that's available in a private database. It's information that's not integrated, yet all of that is information that's critical for protecting the wider environment. 